I sauteed my cremini mushrooms for my mushroom and pea farrotto. And I basically just sliced about eight mushrooms. And these creminis are like baby portobellos, very meaty and very earthy, but they're really good in this farrotto. Okay, so the mushrooms are done. We're gonna leave them aside. In the meantime, I'm gonna get started on my little spring onions. You could use leeks, you could use uh, red onion if you wanted to. You could pretty much use any kind of onion that you like. These spring onions look so pretty. There we go. We're gonna add a couple of cloves of garlic Smash and peel. Give the essence and the aroma of garlic, but not overpower the farrota with too much garlic. My mom's a vegetarian, and I just always want to make sure that I have something that's nice and hearty that she will enjoy as well. Just dump it right in there. And now for the farro. So this is farro, and it looks just like risotto. It's grainier. It's kind of like the flavor of brown rice. It's got a nice, hearty, nutty flavor to it. But if you cook it like you cook risotto, slowly it releases the starches and you get that same creaminess you would get from risotto. So what I did is I just rinsed it out a little bit and I'm using one cup of farrotto. And it's really easy to find here and actually you can find it at home as well. You could also use barley if you wanted to. You could use brown rice if you wanted to. There's sort of other alternatives, but the farrotto is something that's really yummy, and it's called farro, and it's really good. You're gonna toast it just like you toast rice for risotto in a hot pan, and we're gonna deglaze the pan with a little bit more white wine. So white wine and everything for a Sunday supper. There we go. Fatter will slowly start to absorb all of the liquid that you add to it. So what we're gonna start by doing here is we're gonna add ladlefuls of warm chicken broth. So you're gonna start to add it slowly. The key is to add something warm to a warm pan because that way it slowly releases all of the starchiness in the farro and creates this nice creamy texture. And the same thing goes when you make risotto. Last little bit of broth. Okay, so time to finish this off. You can see how creamy it's gotten and the farro has sort of split open. So now, we're going back in with the mushrooms. And some beautiful peas, and these are just frozen peas that you let thaw, just like that. And give this a quick little stir. I love the peas and mushroom combo. I love seeing the sweet peas, and plus they're super sweet. And of course the mushrooms make it nice and meaty. Then we're gonna add four tablespoons of butter. Finish this off, right in there. We're gonna add two different kinds of cheeses. We're gonna add some Parmigiano Reggiano right over the top. Little nuttiness, nice salty flavor. And the Parmigiano is a hard, drier cow's milk cheese. But then, in contrast, we're gonna add some Pecorino. And Pecorino is um, a little bit tangier, but it's not aged as long, so it doesn't have the same sort of potent flavor. So it's a little bit of a milder cheese. Give this a quick little stir. Let the butter melt, let the cheese melt. Oh, that, that smell of the melting Parmesan and uh, Pecorino is so good. Let's just give this a quick little taste and make sure it's seasoned properly. So good, so creamy. 